Hello everybody. Today in this class we shall study rapid and non-destructive methods for quality analysis. You know the chemical methods which are used generally for determination of quality in food materials, they are many a times tedious and they are time consuming. Also, the methods of preparation of the sample takes lot of time, many a times the sample gets destroyed, it gets changed. So, to avoid all these problems, the rapid determination or non-destructive methods for the analysis of food materials have significant importance. Particularly these rapid methods, once they are developed and perfected, they can be used continuously uh, for routine analysis of the food materials and so, so on. So, in this uh, lecture half an hour or so, uh, I will discuss some of the important uh, methods which are rapid and non-destructive methods and although these methods can be used in wide range of food materials for analysis of various quality attributes, but I will concentrate mostly on the analysis of these uh, grains, analysis of grains using rapid and non-destructive methods. But the similar principle, similar way these can be applied to other foods as well. First, let us see what a non-destructive test means. Means that the determination of quality of a food material or component without losing the integrity of the sample. That is the sample is analyzed as it is without it does not need any specific preparation of the sample to make it uh, good for analysis. So, that is what is the non-destructive testing means. Generally, optical spectroscopy is uh, used or it is widely accepted non-destructive technology for food processing or for food quality testing. Important non-destructive methods for analyzing food quality attributes include near infrared spectroscopy, Raman spectroscopy and X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy. In our lecture, we will mainly concentrate on near infrared spectroscopy. So, the NIR near infrared spectroscopy, there are basically two processes which are used either Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy that is FT NIR or FTIR. So, infrared spectroscopy, what does it mean? That is in this method, a molecule can be characterized or identified by its molecular vibrations based on the absorption and intensity of a specific infrared wavelengths. IR spectroscopy is based on the absorbance of electromagnetic radiation at wavelengths in the range of 700 nanometer to 1 millimeter. The bonds between the atoms in the molecule stretch and bend absorbing infrared energy and creating the infrared spectra. So, this is the whole in brief the principle of this method. Regarding Fourier transform in spectroscopy, the Fourier transform decomposes a function of time into the frequencies that make it up and represents it by a series of sinusoidal functions. Fourier transform is applied in spectroscopy to measure how well a sample absorbs or transmits the light at each different wavelength. The fast Fourier transform is required to turn the raw data into the actual spectrum and in many of the cases in optics 
involving interferometers that is the first Fourier transform is based on the winner Kenchin theorem. So, the F T N I R and F T I R that is two most commonly used methods are there which are used for analyzing various food components. So, both of them are generally the same principle of operation is same the only difference or major difference is the wavelength range or wave numbers which is used like for example, as you can see here that in the case of F T and I R the wavelength range is generally 780 to 2500 nanometers or wave number up to 12000 to 4000 per centimeter. Uh, in the case of Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy F T I R the wavelength range uh, used is uh, 2500 to 15000 nanometers and wave numbers may be 4000 to 500 per centimeter. The accordingly because of these differences in the wavelength and wave numbers the F T N I R analysis is considered comparatively less accurate than that of the F T I R. Principle of operation of F T N I R or F T I R spectrophotometer that is as you can see in this picture that is there are spectrophotometers that are provided by some infero interferometers. So, spectrophotometer obtains an infrared spectra by first collect collecting and interferogram of a sample signal using an interferometer. Then it performs Fourier transform on the interferogram to obtain the spectrum. An interferogram is an instrument that uses the technique of superimposing or interfering two or more waves to detect the differences between them. So, FTNIR and FTIR spectrophotometers use a Michelson interferometers that is here shown in the figure. So, accordingly the components of an FTIR or FTNIR spectrophotometer includes that is a light source glow bar or an interferometer, a sample cell, then a detector, computer and recorder or platter. So, this is one FTNIR system which we have in our laboratory or FTIR system that is a simple picture very simple and handy instrument which can table top instrument and it is compact system that is computer in this case the computer is connected separately. So, the different components present in the food materials they give different spectra under different wave number ranges or different uh, uh, wavelength at different wavelengths and accordingly these uh, groups of spectra are obtained as you can see here that is FTIR spectral specifications like for example, the group OH stressing in the compound alcohol this uh, is a uh, spectra is generated in the wave number ranges of 4000 to 3000 centimeter or absorption spectra pattern of 3550 to 3200. Similarly, the compound like uh, carboxylic acid monomers etcetera where CO stretching group they give the spectra absorption spectra at uh, 1770 to 1780 per centimeter or in the wave number ranges of uh, that uh, 2000 to 1650 per centimeter. So, mean when this spectra is generated then there are some techniques I will tell you little later using those techniques these spectra are processed like and finally, the compounds is uh, done that is both quantification as well as that. Uh, NL detecting that is both qualitative and quantitative measurements can be done using these. Similarly, this uh, slide gives you this table gives you that FT NIR spectral specifications that is 
in this spectra this is the spectra where the wavelength absorbance y axis absorbance is there and x axis wavelength. So, you can see that is at the different wavelength and how the different absorbance these spectra are obtained and these spectra like for example, wavelength 2500 absorption spectra that is absorption wave number 4000 per centimeter that is that is a compound class may be combination uh, SH stressing that uh, uh, at in the 1300 to 1420 absorption wave number 6 it may be a CH stressing combination. So, depend on the spectra is obtained these specifications which are spectra which are specific to these specific wave length or wave numbers they are identified and used in the analysis and even finally, for that uh, identification of the compounds and its uh, amount etcetera. So, the spectra is created. So, as I told you next step is the evaluation of the spectra that is with the measurement of a single spectra even sample can be evaluated in a three step process that is the first process is the identification that is identification of a sample is carried out to determine if the spectrum of an incoming raw material fits within the statistical population of authentic and previously accepted batches. In fact, what is done in this case in both in FT and IR, FT, IR, etcetera, that is an important aspect in the library creation. The, the first the material is given and large number of spectra is generated and then library libraries are created. I will come little later to this aspect that is after the identification, the next becomes the confirmatory. The confirmatory in confirmatory what is done? The sample is qualified using confirmatory tests, which is a more specific evaluation of the spectrum that is the spectrum which is generated by the interferometer, then it is evaluated or and the depending as I told you that wave number and wave length further this is spectra which is obtained it is for CH or it is for CO, it is for which functional group and accordingly for. Then each data point of the NIR spectrum is subject to a dedicated test with an individual threshold and this check for conformity at each data point allows a real fingerprinting of the material with adjustable sensitivity. So, after the conformity quantification the last step of the evaluation that is during the quantification of the different constituents and outlier test based on either based on the uh, MD is performed that is Mahalanode bis distance test is performed. Again the analysis spectrum is compared to the sample population in the individual quantification model and the sets are quantified depending upon the absorption spectra. So, these were the basic principles in which this uh, NIR or FTIR systems are used and as I told you in the beginning of the lecture that uh, uh, infrared spectroscopy has a wide ranging application in food analysis. It can be used for detection of proximate composition of food products, quick and rapid detection of proximate composition of food products without any even the sensors or touch probes and such and such and IR sensor, IR sensor are there where even the it can be used to detect the quality and quantity of the component of food uh, value or nutrients present inside a food which is packed. So, even touch probe sensors can be used. So, completely non destructive method and there are several types of FTIR system or FT and IR systems are available which are now many food processing industries they use these systems for analysis even this infrared moisture meters are available, infrared milk analyzers are available which determines fat, protein, lactose content in milk. 
this uh, can be used for measurement of degree of unsaturation of fats and oils even this technology can be used for for finding the varietal differentiation to differentiate one variety of grain from the other variety or to detect the infestation uh, in the cereal grains or in food grains ftir in combination with gc can be used for the identification of flavor and aroma compounds in different food materials it can be used for identification of structural changes in packaging films which might occur due to its exfoliation ftir spectra of bacteria are specific very specific and they show the spectral characteristics of cell components of the bacteria so the bacterial cell components like fatty acid intracellular proteins polysaccharides nucleic acid etc can be evaluated or analyzed or quantified using spectroscopic techniques so now i will give you a case study which is a depend based on the study worked in my laboratory we have used this ft and ir method and even standardized developed process for the evaluation or detection of insect infestation in stored wheat grain so the as far as the methodology is concerned actually that is in the earlier class also i discuss little bit in this aspect where we are studying hyperspectral imaging so in the similar manners the infested grain samples are prepared there is the fresh wheat is taken it is conditioned to different moisture content because the moisture content is an important variable which influences the grain spoilage during storage or infestation etc so the different uh, moisture ranges were taken from 10 to 16 percent 12 to 13 or 13 percent normally is considered a safe storage moisture safe moisture content for the storage of the grain so this a little uh, this side and other side the, so 10 to 16 percent it was conditioned and then two uh, molds s or ig and r dominica were used to get the infested grain they were required number or counted numbers of these insects of different life stages they were infested or inoculated with the grain and then this inoculated grain inoculated with these fungi or molds was stored under specific conditions at tops in incubators at 27 degree celsius and 65% relative humidity so means that is using this procedures samples were prepared that is as grain samples with known infestation because we were in the process of standardizing so in the online detection these are you can take a directly uh, that is the sample from the field or from the factory or even from the storage go down etc where the unknown because here it is the as i told you earlier that is the library creation is a important task so in this manner we normally that is the and the sample which we are taking it is by using standard analytical techniques may be chemical method or microbiological method in case the microbiological in this case the microbiological methods we analyze the sample for the creation of the library and it is always better that is if you have a large number of sample you analyze large number of sample this it will give a better reproducibility of the data so the samples with known characteristics are taken they are uh, their spectra is generated uh, this spectra that is the, uh, the spectral library is created means that is the large number spectra is processed and the library is standardized so when you get a given unknown sample like in this way we have developed a spectral library for wheat infestation so any grain if it comes when it is given to ft and ir it will generate spectra of that particular grain even simple single spectra and it will process and compare it with this its spectral library library which was generated earlier so with the comparison it uh, can tell the system software can tell that as yes, whether the grain is infested or not so the spectral library generation and then finally model value 
validation. So, these are the spectra, spectral library which are generated uh, in my laboratory on Sonalika wheat variety and Sarbati wheat variety. You can see that uh, there are variety differences uh, can be seen in the nature of the spectra and some observations uh, and peaks etcetera which are obtained. Then these spectra they are analyzed using different uh, uh, software or chemometric methods, analytical features of the different regions and pre-processing methods for calibration and validation of the models which are developed like moisture, protein, uric acid, thousand kernel weight and hardness. These are some of the response parameter quality value on the basis of which the samples are compared. So, these are again that they all these values and the BAME numbers respect to web numbers are given in this like for example, moisture it can be processed or that in the web number range of 12489.4 to 7498.3 and then maximum and minimum that is. So, in this range of regions that is the moisture. So, it is pre-processing method was used first derivative methods PLS factors were 4 and the root mean is square uh, error for cross validation was in this case 0.485. So, this uh, in fact uh, RMSE value should be lower, R square value should be higher which indicates that the model is best fit and data is good, it has a good prediction. So, these are the linear regression plots which are obtained using the software for the measure versus predicted values for cross validation and the IR for different component like moisture, protein, hardness, uric acid and thousand kernel weight. So, you can see here that is if that uh, this line if the all the predicted values as well as measured value if they are closely the all the data fall on the line it good gives a good prediction. So, like in this case you can say that is moisture, protein this production is much better, better production the models which have been developed by this NIR system, they are productive better. Rather, here there is a scattering in the case of hardness, some scattering in the initial level, there is more or even in the uric acid, you can see the data are little more scattered. So, with this we compare that to validate the results and in our studies we have got a good validation using standard techniques that is the predicted values even we feed with the or compare with the experimentally analyzed value and then determine. Okay. So, after this the other method that is uh, we studied that they have found out the details studied the details of the FTNIR or FTIR methods. Then another important method which can be used is in this regard for a quick testing of various food components which also works on the similar principle somewhat similar principle is the uh, biomimetics that is this particularly is used for uh, that is the attributes which are used human sense organs are used to analyze certain attributes of the food material. So, those attributes they can also be used by the instrument the analyzed or found out by using some instruments. So, biomimetics is the term for the use of natural models in technology innovation to solve complex human problems. Biomimetic methods mimic human senses for quality analysis. So, different biomimetic instrument are di different instruments which are available. They are like electronic nose, electronic eye or electronic tongue because these three that is among the five sense organs these three are the more commonly used uh, sense organs that is nose, tongue and uh, eye these are the which uh, evaluate the quality of the different food materials. So, accordingly these uh, systems are available now. So, electronic nose again that uh, I tell which we have worked on something. So, just in this slide this gives a comparison between uh, electronic nose and uh, this uh, human sense organ that is uh, like in the human organ there are neurons, olfactory valve and the brain. So, in this ENO system the brain 
is the computer, Olaf factory bulb, these are the storage chips etcetera which are used in the system and then these neurons they are different sensor arrays which collect the data which take the information about. So, here uh, further like inhaling for that purpose in the e nose the pump is given this uh, for Ola factory epithelium the sensors are there sun membrane depolarized. So, this thing signals are sent to the. So, it is in fact the e nose electronic nose it works in the similar manner of course, it mimics our human organ run system that is the components of ENO system this is the picture you can see of the ENO system which we have in our laboratory and this basically it contains that is a sensor chamber where different sensors are there then the some sample preparation assembly that is the sample holder. So, different samples are prepared that is a and this sample there are some auto samplers which takes the volatile sample in the volatile forms and puts uh, into the that is the sample holder and these sensors they sense sample holder sample sensor right and the finally, these data which is recorded by this sensor is sent to the computer or uh, which is processed and it is a quantified or it is identified. So, accordingly the working principle in the same manner as I told you that is the there is a some nitrogen or some other gas whether the samples uh, broken or evaporated then the samples uh, components in the form of vapors are taken and these vapors are sensed by that uh, uh, volatiles they are sensed by the different sensors and the data is sent to the computer. So, these sequential steps in the e nose data analysis are the pre processing that is first is the sensor array which collects data then it is pre processed or normalized then feature extraction finally, classification and decision making. So, these are the four major steps in the e nose analysis in the pre processing as you have seen the earlier case it compress transit response of the sensor array reduce as the reduces the sample to sample variation feature extraction reduce the dimensionality of the measurement space extract useful information by pattern recognition it is performed with the linear transformation so which pca lda etc in the classification it is done uh, trained to identify the pattern that are representative of each other that is the equipment is trained and then these uh, the other is identified by comparing with the trained one. Finally, the decision making which used for application application is specific knowledge determine whether the given data belongs to anyone in the database or not. Okay. So, this also like FTIR, FTNIR, this e nose also has lot of application in almost detection of food spoilage, analysis of food ripening, fungal growth and presence of mycotoxin, analysis of milk adulteration, detention of uh, rancidity in fats and oil, monitoring fermentation and identification of bacteria or characterizing the different materials like on the basis of their flavor like coffee beans dates chocolates etc so i will again case study 2 the detection of infestation in wheat using electronic nose so the sample is prepared in the similar manner it is also so you have the sample with known characteristics it is a, a given the samples that is the two sensors that is sensors sense data and sent to the that is spectra which is generated it is processed in the similar manner in this fly that is it is the e nose which we have the sensor data then it gives the radar charge there are e nose which we have it has 18 metal oxide sensors so these sensors they sense the data and it is in the radar form and then finally the third stage it is uh, the data is processed so, you can say the spectra here different spectra finally, that is the of infestation results infestation infestation sample of 45 days 90 days 135 days 180 days wheat and you can see there is a clear cut 
difference in the different uh, spectra, so which uh, is further quantified analyzed like uh, the regression model or other prediction models uh, by using inbuilt software in the system, they are found out. And then here it is the uh, for the prediction of this uh, reference number that is insect and then predicted number of insects. So, uh, reference and prediction the data like it is the for infection and classification of the data which is used. So, in the prediction again like in the real earlier case here also you see if all the uh, predicted values were, were uh, as well as experimentally determined value if they almost fall, fall on this line they are close. So, it shows that they, they are fit that is better fit the prediction is good in this case this the number of insects production is much better than the production in the case of proteins because in this case the data are points are is scattered. So, after the production the next step is the classification of the data for the classification of the data like softwares are chemometric like principal component analysis or high hierarchical cluster analysis can be used either depending upon the sample, depending upon the type of response one like for example, if you want to see that whether it is a spoiled uh, fruit or a spoiled uh, mango. So, obviously, in which in this here that is the a good mango or ripe mango, good quality mango can be first uh, given to this uh, you know, to sense the um, uh, attributes or flavor of good mango, then spoiled mango you give the 18 sensors that will analyze and then by the PCA. The. So, here it gives that is the bad samples are classified or they are. So, analysis can be done on the basis of any principal components, any components. So, samples are accordingly made into clusters or made classified. So, this helps in the deciding that is the to decide the what is the level of infestation and to quantify it. Like here in the higher cluster analysis you can see that is the on the x axis the infested grain, least infested samples, medium infested sample, highly infested samples they are clustered in different groups. So, this is done basically the ENOGE it is a very very good or useful technology because the human sniffers are costly when compared to electronic nose many a times there is the human senses they are the subjective and they, there might be several variations in the data found out by sensory analysis etcetera. So, this the problems even sometimes the detection of hazardous or poisonous gas which sometimes comes are toxic substances toxic flavors fumes becomes difficult which can be easily found out uh, detected by this electronic instrument or electronic nose. So, the an e nose overcomes the problems associated with the human olfactory systems and it makes a, it is a speedy reliable new technology right where the gas sensors are used generally the metal oxide sensors or such other sensors are used to mimic the human sense organs are human nose and give the uh, reliable and qual good quality data. So, these an IR technologies uh, near infrared or infrared spectroscopy or uh, e nose technology they are good rapid and uh, non destructive methods for determination of food quality and apart from this there are some other methods, but they work on the similar principles. So, one can work and do it. This thank you very much for your patience here.